from MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein, here with licensed contractor Jeff Simmons from Houseworks, and Pam Pibus, ASHE certified inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, is out this week. It's an open topic show, so we're looking for your questions to get your projects completed around the house. We can talk about quick fixes, big projects, whatever you're working on. Join the conversation with us this morning by calling 877 877- MPB ring. That's 877-672-7464. Or, of course, send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Oh, remember, you can uh, hear it again Saturday at 9. So be listening. Jeff, uh, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great. What would you get into this weekend? A uh, bunch of wind and a little rain. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you? I mean, did anything happen? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Of course, mm-hmm. you know we we we. I, I live in Biloxi on the weekends, right. so uh, we went down to the boat and and still had a g- good time. But right, just um, lo- weather was not on our side. No, no, no. and it's not going to be for a couple of days. It's not going to be for for a few days. That's yeah. Right. So so in these situations, as a general contractor, knowing that you've got a wet you know, at least next few days, what do you, what do you just call off the troops? Well, what no, happens? No, <clears throat> no, you can't because the interest clock is always ticking. Right. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, I don't care if it's a remodel project or a new, a new build interest. Someone is spending their money. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what, what we do, obviously we try to prepare for, you know, the, the the weather so right. uh, today we're building all of our fireplaces oh so okay. we, we've we've got a half a dozen fireplaces that that need to be built so we prepared for that yesterday and that's something you uh, can do indoors absolutely okay. and um and we've got a few projects that need some sheetrock we've mm-hmm. got some luckily we're we're busy enough that we have some inside work right oh, so. okay all right well good for you well, uh, I did something that, again, should be left to 19-year-old people this weekend. Uh-oh. Uh, my my uh, cross-the-street neighbor cut down this glorious big tree, and I thought, man, there's a winner right there Uh-oh. If, I can, if I can do it. So I dragged this giant tree over to my house and uh, took a chainsaw to it, and then I spent the rest of the day splitting wood with an axe. <laughs> Uh, I, I did it. I mean, like we have firewood to last through, you know, next year, but I will tell you it is Wednesday. I did this on Saturday and my back, (laughs) my arms, my shoulders, my neck, and even my head are still hurting because of that act. Now, let me tell you every year I find this one guy, I know this one guy who sits outside of a pharmacy that used to be open in Jackson. And he sits there with this wood, oh, and you can go by, and you'll yes. be like, okay, well, you come stack it. And for like 75 bucks, this guy will drive to your house and stack the wood for you, right? Yes. You can buy it and stack it. I don't know why I didn't do that this year and decided that I was going to be, you know, Jason Lumberjack. I'm telling you. And, but I got that axe and sat there all day long. So, well, you know, typically when you— Sucked on painkillers, isn't when it? You, <laughs> when you mess with Mother Nature. Yes. Um, she's tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm talking a shovel. I'm talking a tree. Yeah. You, when you start moving Mother Nature, you 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 better get prepared because she is not easy. Well, I can tell you, I, I did learn this. This is, That is a game for the young. Uh, splitting wood is either for uh, uh, young people or devices made to do so. So. There you go. Get you, get, <laughs> go to go to the big box store and rent the splitter. And well, and my and, and my wife said, oh, "I'll just get you a splitter." And I'm like, "I do this once a year. Why would you know? Why would I buy anything? I don't need and, a splitter. Yeah, <laughs> I got an axe." So anyway, number to call is eight seven seven MPB ring. That's eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Also, you can send an email to fixit one hundred and one at mpbonline dot org. And I did want to open up with an email that I got. Uh, Hi. I'm from Poplarville. I was wondering the safest way, and this is interesting, especially right now, the safest way to shut off my electricity if I decide to evacuate for yet another hurricane. Also, how do I shut off my water? Thanks, Pam. Okay, well, Pam, I will say uh, I'll cover water. Uh, Jeff can do power. Yep. Water is probably one of the one of the easier things you can do as far as location because typically that's associated with a box 
uh, in front of your home that is between uh, you and the road, uh, and it is the city's water supply. If you're in that, if you're in a city area, I, I was thinking about Poplarville, and they will have you know uh, city water of some sort. But yeah. anyway, there's a valve. There's this. Uh, if you look in your yard, uh, the way it's done now, there's about a one foot plank that you pull up, and inside there is a valve. And there's a, a little a bolt in there that you turn. And you can use a thing that costs $15 anywhere you want to buy it that's called a water key. And you can stand up and turn the water off. Um, this is one of the best things you can know about your home. If ever anything happens, you can run to the street. You can, uh, you can run to the street and turn your water off. Say, like, if, uh, let's say a toilet blows up or a line blows up and you've got water pouring, you can run into the street and turn this thing off immediately. Yes. So so that is uh, your water shutoff valve. Other homes have valves closer to the home that are not associated with the city valve if they chose to put them in. Well, it is code in some areas to have water cut off uh, inside the home. So uh, all of our new homes, mm-hmm. we, we, we put... Our water cut off, you know, behind a small door, maybe in a closet or something. And uh, really, I like. I've never lived in a home that had a cut off outside of the city yeah, water. I I like if you're going to be gone for uh-huh. any length of time. I'm yes. not talking going to work, mm-hmm. but um, most people just aren't that diligent. Right. And and but if you're going to be gone long weekend, weeks vacation or whatever, mm-hmm. go out there and cut the water off. This it's cheap insurance policy. Okay. Right. Uh, now, she said cut her power off. Yes, power. Um, I'm not going to cut my power off. Um, Why is that? Well, okay, first of all, I guarantee there's something in the freezer's freezer and there's something in the refrigerator. Okay. All right. So when you get back, it's going to be ruined. Now, if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt mm-hmm. that you are going to get damage from this storm and you are going to get your power knocked out. Right. Then obviously you're going to clear out your refrigerator, your freezers, and right, you're right, going to right. prepare for all that. At that point, turn it off. But but if it's just a storm and and and, and you're not sure, mm-hmm. um, and I don't know how you would be sure, but anyway, I'm not going to cut my power off. Okay. That, that's going to be okay. the last thing I'm going to. Okay. Do. But the the water is something you need to become oh, acquainted absolutely. with. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. All right, um, so uh, uh, we've got a call on the line, and I'm almost afraid of this, but I'm going to go to it anyway because we may be taking uh, either some accolades or a whip in here. Jackie's on the line in Itawama County. Uh, what's going on, Jackie? Uh, hi. Several weeks ago, I called y'all about a leaky roof. Yes, ma'am. And I followed um, Cam and Jeff's instructions, and I've gotten more information. None of it good. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so I'm, sorry. Uh, but I'm so I'm at a point where I need to make a decision. But um, uh, I did get several people to look at the roof and diagnose it and give me estimates. Good. Um, and I found, learned four things. Um, one one of the reasons the leaf, it, leak, roof is leaking is because of the in, improper insulation of the shingles. No. Oh, um, yeah. Two. Um, Several people said substandard shingles were late used. Third, substandard um, shingles were used. Yeah, not sure you can buy those, but I didn't okay. either. Well, or seconds or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Third, um, a ridge vent which was placed on top of the roof, mm-hmm. but no vents were cut into the roof. Um, so. In other words, the roof, the attic hasn't been able to. Okay. It doesn't. They didn't make it's, a hole. It's not no. okay. So the they, shingles have deteriorated because there's no ventilation. Right. Is what I'm They're, hearing. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. And one man even went on the roof and took a video, and yep. um, the he said the shingles are blistering, and he yep. showed me places where. Some of the shingles aren't even nailed down properly. Oh boy, but Jackie! I am so happy that you went out there and got a yeah, couple of people to me look. Me too. And 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 everything she's saying, I'm agreeing with what you're saying, Jackie. A blister uh, to the uneducated eye looks real similar to hail damage. Uh, the yes. difference is uh, 
A blister is just like when you get sunburnt, it, it, you, you get a blister and it's perfectly round, if you will. Mm-hmm. A hail hit is jagged and looks like a piece of ice, which right. that is what it is. So that's, that's how you tell the difference. And then while we're on this subject, lift up the bottom of your shingle. If you suspect hail, it should have a dent on it that you see from the bottom of the shingle. Oh. A blister will not have that dent. Interesting. Right. Okay. So so where do you go from here, Jackie? Well, the fourth thing I learned, and this was uh, the consensus that there's not enough damage to file an insurance claim. Of course. Uh, so, well, um, first of all, it's, it's, not, it's not covered either, so. Right. So um, that means whatever I do, I'll have to pay out of pocket. Um, my ideal plan would, the main leaks are in one area over mm-hmm. one room. Uh, my ideal plan would be to have that section repaired and wait until there's enough damage for an inch, the entrance right. to pay for it. Jackie, so Jackie. Far, yes. How uh, old is this uh, roof? You're, you're reading my mind, Jason. <laughs> when, do, when, do, when was this roof put on? Uh Ten or maybe twelve years ago, okay. I found it, it, the fact that it was so badly installed. Yeah. It makes it makes me, you know, it, my first thought was, I, why have they not reinstalled this roof as a terrible install? Yeah, uh, I, I think her problem, and and it will cause many many problems. Her problem is ventilation. So right. Um, hmm, well, and I finally did get in touch here from the person who installed it, but he has washed his hands of the situation. Mm-hmm. And, um, and in Itawamba P- County, if you ask who installs roof, this is the person, the first name people say, but he, he has washed his hands of the situation. Right. So whatever is done it's going to be have to done, be done by someone else so right that's where i am and i don't know if y'all have any more suggestions or not um are you are you obviously you want to do this without spending you know as much as you, you're going to have to spend some here yeah there's no way out of it it's, you know you hope to have has anyone given you an estimate on the full cost of the roof yes um is it scary is, um, there, one man said I could replace two sides and leave the other two sides. And then, um, I've gotten, uh, but two other people said really the entire roof needs to be replaced. If it I'm it do. does. No, I can, you, it, agree, you that, yes, you have a okay. ventilation issue. Right. So fix the ventilation, replace the roof. And unfortunately, um, you got introduced to a, um, uh, for lack of better words, a bad contractor. Right. And uh, um, it, it, that's all I can say. And, right. that, and I'm going from what you're saying. I'm not right. calling this person a bad contractor because right. I don't know him. I haven't seen the work. There's a bad experience. Yeah, yeah. a better word. Yeah. So, unfortunately, you're going to have to have to spend some money to get a new roof. Right. Jackie, sorry about that. If 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 you have any questions, any questions along the way in this process, if if you know if you get a couple of days into this and you still need more advice, please call us. But I I, I will say, uh, uh, Jeff makes these calls all the time with insurance. Uh, a replacement of the full roof sounds like the recommendation. Yeah. And well, thank y'all so much for all your help. Bye bye. Thank you, ma'am. You, you know, just to just to follow up on that, just for a minute. Uh huh. If and it sounds like she may not have the disposable funds to do that. Right, right. Um, I, I think I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to borrow enough money or mm-hmm. somewhere to borrow enough money to put this roof on because mm-hmm. it's only getting worse. Oh yes, and if, it will if cause more damage. If it's five thousand, ten thousand dollars today, mm-hmm. this time next year it's going to be more. That's a great way to think of it. Okay. So, unfortunate. Wow. All right, uh, Bob is on the line, but we're going to take a quick break, um, and uh, we want to hear from you, though. What's happening at your home? You can give us a call at 
MPB ring. That's 877-672-7464. Bob, stay on the line. We'll hit you right after the break. You can send an email also, fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein, who are licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. Pam Pibus from Inspect It Like a Girl is out this week. You can join the conversation this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Bob is on the line in Moss Point, and he's got a water pipe issue. What's going on, Bob? Oh, yeah. I hope that's the right kind of water pipe, but go ahead. Okay, uh, 1962 house. Pipe. 1962 house. Uh, water pipe, two feet from the edge of the carpool. Located it, cut it out, and spliced it and with the coupling. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not a member of the International Brotherhood of Plumbers, so I'm giving right. different, <laughs> different uh, bits of information. I'm told that I need to brace the pipe with the valve, newly installed cutoff valve in the line. Now, I cannot find that recommended six-inch piece of metal pipe. I was wondering, could I improvise with PVC and fill that with concrete, quick creep or something right underneath that and uh, let that support do? I'll uh, hang up. And so, well, hang on, Bob. We have questions. Yeah. Yeah, we've got questions. Is okay. This- is this water line in a ditch? Uh, no, it's right underneath the asphalt, about uh, two feet driveway. But it's in the dirt. Yes. It should be supported within the dirt. Yeah, lay it on the bottom of the dirt. I think someone is trying to get this thing complicated for you. Is this a <laughs> is this a is this a PVC water line coming to the house? No, this is old 1960 cast iron. Uh, cast iron. And now I've got to put a PVC uh, cutoff valve. Well, in cast iron in should place. be sewer. It's Did, right next to the sewer. Right next to the sewer. Mm-hmm. Wow. A four inch sewer line. Yes. A four inch sewer line, but the water feed is also cast iron? Yes. Wow. Okay. Old school. And it's how big? A three quarter inch. Three quarter cast iron pipe for the water line. Wow! Wow! Correct. Okay. Um, well, I mean, PVC can handle the pressure of standard city water. Well, yeah, but you're not going to marry. I think you you're not going to marry PVC with cast iron. I think you're going to have to get a uh, rubber coupling. Um, and they make them. They, I, they I yeah. Had, uh, the piece spliced and uh, mended with the. Uh, coupling, okay. Rubber, rubber insert until I can uh, find out enough correct information to install the PVC line. Man, I wish we had a. I wish we had camera on on TV. Right, I mean yeah. on radio. Right. But so then we could it, see it. Yeah, but then it'd be called TV. It'd be TV, it? right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> Bob, let me let me dream on this for a minute, Bob, and I'll, I'll I'll talk about it when you hang up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and. Uh, I finally did locate the metal box, meter box to put in. Now that that set me back some time and money at the street. So now I'm just okay. going to support the support the line and put the box over it and put and you every now and then go out there and cut it off when it freezes and all that. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. I think I've got the picture. Okay. I'm. Hanging up and going back to my easy chair. Thanks, right. Bob. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Okay, w- what I'm hearing is Bob wants a cutoff uh-huh. at this break. Right. Uh, which is fine. He mm-hmm. can get a gate valve. Right. Um, it'd be so much easier if it wasn't cast iron. Well, it is. <laughs> but uh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> well, and... and, and uh, but but he can I mean he can patch this if he's got the right stuff absolutely now um, I would say you may want to may not want to do the 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 big boxes you may want to go to a local hardware and or go to a plumbing supply house yeah yeah I'm going to the plumbing supply and and if it's me I'm not putting a cutoff right there really no no I'm I'm covering that back up and I'm never getting in under my driveway again 
Okay. All right. I, I'm going to use my cutoff at the meter, uh-huh. or I'm going to put one at the house. Okay. Um, but with it being cast iron, I'm at the meter. Okay. And to be quite honest with you, I've never seen a three-quarter inch cast iron water line. Well, and we don't know where uh, Bob was, and, and he, you know, this may have been put down by his granddad for all we yeah, know. Yeah, who knows? So. Okay. All right, number to call is 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Um, if you don't know, this was years ago. Jeff, you've been on the show since what year? 16? Well, Lily is, she just turned six, so uh-huh. she was born the Wednesday on the show. Oh, yeah, 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 so that's true. I've been here six years. All right, six years. Well, if, if those of you who don't know, we brought Jeff in originally to do a show about permitting. And, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully you still remember all that stuff, right? Of course. Okay, cool. <laughs> One of the things uh, Java brought up is uh, what do you, what kind of permit do you need a permit to do some stuff around the house? Jason has talked about a lot. Of, I've talked about a lot of stuff on the show that I've done to my house <laughs> that I didn't necessarily get a permit for. Uh, but I did also learn that as a homeowner, I can do anything I want. A, but, home, a homeowner working on their home. Mm-hmm. Does not have to have a permit for anything. Period. Did, did everybody hear that? That doesn't mean you can't blow up your home in now, process. Now, I, that doesn't mean you should. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jason. I promise you, right. you should not. So okay. um, this is how I look at, at, at our inspectors. Mm-hmm. They're another set of eyes for me. Right. And and it doesn't cost much. So they're, they're a relatively inexpensive employee for me. Right. But it's you know it's really interesting if you think about it. Every every weekend, Jeff, you drive through your neighborhood. It's funny, just about any neighborhood you drive through, uh, uh, in the warm months of the year, you'll see someone's privacy fence laying over on the side of the road where they've replaced it. Right, and it's just you know. Bob and his buddy out drinking beers, putting up a fence. And, but one of the things, building a fence, in some cases, needs to be permitted. Absolutely it does, because in in a lot of cities, there are certain fencing that is not um, approved. Right, right. So you could end up putting up a fence uh, over the weekend mm-hmm. and taking it down on Monday. Right. <laughs> so that's, that's terrible. And the city doesn't care what you paid for it. Right. So, right. Um, Another thing, by the way, if 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 you are, and I've I've done the fence thing myself, but if you are going to do a fence, call eight one one before, please. please, before you put a shovel in the ground. Call eight one. I've told this story before. My next door neighbor hired a contractor, which was just a guy. You know, I don't know if the guy was whatever. Anyway, he was putting in a fence, uh, and man, he put one shovel in the ground and hit the gas line yep one shovel oh yeah he had not done the dug the first hole <laughs> and, and hit look, the gas line that can get expensive and it can get dangerous oh we had four 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 uh, uh fire trucks That's in our right. neighborhood all That's of a sudden right. yeah so anyway all right bruce is on the line in lumberton he's got a question about that cast iron pipe uh comment what's going on bruce Yes, sir. I, I don't think that's cast iron. I think that's just rusted galvanized pipe. And I do, too. It. And uh, I think he'd go borrow four or five hundred dollars down a ditch switch and put him a new PVC line in that, there. That's what he sure ought to do. Wow, that's a great idea, Bruce. Forget the old plumbing altogether. And move on. Well, yeah, but but again, now that's 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 dollars, and again, this is radio, and we cannot see it. No, but but if you are, I will say this: if if you're looking to to plumb, and if you know how to work with PVC, it's not an expensive product to no, work with. It's not. So, um, and and there are plenty of ways, and and a lot of people look at this as scary because they look under their sinks, but but if you. If you look and see how PVC is put together, it, it's not brain surgery. It is particular, and it wants to be done properly. But it can be done by a normal person, DIY person. They sell all the glues and all that groovy stuff at, at any right. of your home stores. You're right. So uh, that's something a DIYer actually can try. But just remember, if you're going into your main plumbing, a plumber is always the best. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, uh, Bruce, anything else about that cast iron pipe? That's it. Thanks. Right. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thank you, Bruce. sir. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, got a very common question here I wanted to answer before we go to break. Uh, an email that came in. Hello. Um, I have a dryer that is spinning but not getting hot. It's a Kenmore 700. 
about 12 years old. Thank you. Okay. That's an interesting question with a lot of information that it doesn't sound. It's only one sentence. But the fact that the washer is 12 years old or dryer. the dryer is 12 dryer. years old is one thing. If our resident expert Timmy was here, he would say that's an old dryer. And and appliances that he has said on this show um, are about seven, eight years and they start getting, you know, yeah, wonky. Yeah, you know, but the thing about a dryer, uh-huh. it's a motor and a drum and a heating element. And it should last 30 years. I mean, However, yeah, this person uh, is talking about, one. There's, it's funny that you say that, a motor, a drum, a heating element. There's, there's, uh, there's a couple of other things here that really goof up dryers that are very mechanical and very easy to deal with, okay? One of those things is the little relay guy that turns on the heating element. Yep. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with, uh, especially if you've got an older, say, Kenmore, may have a dial timer on it, which means you turn a dial, and it's like a timer, like an egg timer kind of thing. It moves. Those timers go bad after a while. And that timer also is part of the mechanism that tells it to turn hot. Yes. So so the neat thing is, Jeff, the thing you mentioned about the drum, uh, a motor, and a heater is basically what it is. Um, if, you, if, if you work with those relays and stuff, if those things are still good, that dryer will just keep on going for good. I have replaced a heating element in a dryer before. And uh, if you'll like watch a video, read the instructions, that's not horrible either. Uh, You just have to kind of know what you're doing. Uh, A dryer is not a difficult thing to fix. Uh, It's it's funny that if you take the cover off of the dryer, it's mostly just space. There's nothing in it. That's right. There's nothing there. That's right. So, all right. uh, You know what? Let's go ahead and take our break. Time for us to take our second break of the hour. Still looking to hear from you about your home improvement projects. If you want to join today's show, give us a call at one eight seven seven. MPB ring. That's 877-672-7464 or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with licensed contractor Jeff Simmons from Houseworks. You can join the conversation this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We were talking about dryers during the break because of the email question that we got. And uh, Jeff's uh, <laughs> Jeff, tell us that situation uh, that your wife got you into again. Um, well, somebody did it. Somebody, not yeah, your wife. There's yeah. only two of us live there, but anyway. <laughs> the washer, it's a front loader, and of course, something happened. The door wouldn't come on, the machine wouldn't turn back on, and it's flashing this code. So, of course, we had to call the repair guy, and the uh, repair guy went in there and pushed three or four buttons. Mm hmm. <laughs> but you had to know how to do it, yeah. and uh, all of a sudden the door comes open, the machine's fine, cost me a hundred bucks <laughs> for a guy to come in and type in a code. Yeah, that is frustrating. I'll tell you what I've done. I've got a similar kind of dryer, and it'll throw a code, and I'll go look that code up, and well, see what's up. I, I wasn't smart enough to do that. Right. <laughs> That's what the Google machine is for. <laughs> there man. you go. All right, let's go to the phone. Uh, who's first here, Java? It's, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel, uh, got a comment about that dryer. What are you thinking, man? Yes, sir. I've had an issue like this before where just one of the breakers went out because the dryer is usually at 240, so if you only get half only get half at 120, it'll still turn on, but it won't heat. That's so neat that, that you say true. that. One of the right. things I said when we got off the air was what I hate about dryers is what uh, they call the dual-phase power. Because it'll it'll fake you out and make you think that your dryer's not working when it's actually a power issue. Mm-hmm. David, do you know a good way to tell that when it happens? Have you run across it? Okay, All right. For me? Yeah, Daniel. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just put a voltmeter on it. Put, oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Get a voltmeter. On, yeah. on, the, on the plug itself. Right. See the 240 volt. Yeah, on the on the uh, receptacle. Right. So 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 the the uh, the message there, folks, is that it's not always the dryer. Um, uh, there is a percentage of time that it will be a, a power phase thing. It was on a dryer that I have, and turns out, turns out, I thought it was at the uh, the wall side. Daniel, turns out, uh, it had burned 
where it connected to the dryer on one of the phases. Yep. yep. And I had to replace the cord, and we were back in business. Hey, I was in my, uh, I guess I was probably mid-20s or something. Mm-hmm. Dryer goes out. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the first thing I do? I go down, get a new dryer, right? hook it up. <laughs> well, it's still not drying. Right. Well, guess what? I don't know. The, the lint, um, this particular house in which we, we can't do this anymore, it's right. not code anymore, but it went in the slab and through the house and then back up. Uh-huh. So when you walked out of your yard, there was a, a cap there, and that, that was your dryer vent. Right. Well, the reason we can't do that anymore is the problems it causes. Right. And sure enough, that had to be cleaned out. But the dryer that I gave to a neighbor – was perfectly was fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Daniel. I appreciate your uh, appreciate your help there. That that absolutely does happen on dryers and will throw off even some of the best uh, of those looking. Tom's on the line, and where are you calling from, Tom? Uh, Ingemar. Ingemar. All right. Cool. Well, you had a comment about that dryer, also. Well, yeah. Daniel pretty much stole most of the thunder. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> about the two phase power. Uh, one thing. One thing that. A lot of people don't realize it breaks down real simple. It's a 110-volt heating element and a 110-volt motor, and they're each using a leg. And there is an if-then switch in there. If you check your breaker box, one side might just be dead, and it's not turning on the heating element. But if for some reason you lost the motor side, Uh it won't heat it won't turn on at all it's prevent like you click it on and walk off and it start a fire right right so okay there's a little relay in there but it like you, you know it could be burnt like you said against uh where it connects the dryer it could be in the breaker or it could be in the plug if you plugged and unplugged a lot you might have knocked something loose in there but i would doubt it that's a good point but, uh, thank but, uh, you tom it's, it's 210 volt systems put together to serve a purpose to, to tumble dry clothes that's all it is Okay. That's right. Thank you, Tom. We appreciate that, it. That that we used to handle on a line in the backyard. Right. <laughs> so we'll use extra energy for that. Right. All right. Uh, let's go to Mike in Columbus. And uh, you, you want to talk about that repairing that PV, uh, PVC pipe we talked about earlier? Yes. Uh, now, I have a PVC pipe oh. that's leaking, uh, and it's under concrete. Is there a way... To repair PVC pipe without exposing, it. without a plumber, no, no, without yeah, without, without exposing it, oh no, no, there is no way. No, I mean, there's big sewer lines we can run liners in and mm. that type stuff, but you've got a you've got a pressured uh, pressurized water line. No, um, now you can. It's running under your driveway. I understand that. Find the pipe on either side of that driveway. Pull well, it. Pull. Is, uh, it's not actually. It's not a service line. It's a pool, swimming pool. Okay. Well, it's still under. It's still under pressure. Yeah. Um, no, that's just a replacement. No, that's right. You, you're going to have to pull that line out and and and, and try to. Can can you get to both? Sides of the concrete where you can cut it and pull it? Oh, you can't, uh, can you? Because it's hooked to no, the pool. Uh, no. What's it What's it servicing? It's your return lines and your suction lines from uh, your pump. Gotcha. Well, no, I understand that, but is it the skimmer or the or the main drain? It's be the skimmers, most likely. Mm, you could always cut your skimmers off. Because you're going to bust concrete now if it's leaking under the under the it's leaking under the pool deck, isn't it? Yes, it's under concrete. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're you're going you're going to saw cut some concrete and bust it out, or turn your skimmer off. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I was just there's a lot of new products. I know. I was just, uh, <laughs> looking for that one uh, unicorn it's, product. If it's out there, I don't know about it. Oh. So. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for your time. Well, I hate it for you. Thanks, Mike. Right, thank you. Yes, sir. Let's keep going. Toby is on the line in Bahia, and he's got a comment about that dryer vent that you had an issue with. Uh, Toby, you there? I'm here. So what's going on? Well, I, my dryer sits in the middle of my house, and the vent runs through the slab yep. through, uh, through my bedroom. And every now and then, I have to pull my dryer out and take my leaf blower 
Yep. And hold it up to that ho- that hole and just blow the lint out of it. Yes. And my dryer will dry better. Yep. Well, let me tell you, um, I have I have another procedure for you that you might want to try. the 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 leaf blower is great, but it's only so strong and. The lint, you know, the the ter- the crazy thing about what's in uh, your lint ducts is wet lint, and the and the and the 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 blower won't necessarily get everything out of there. However, they make a drill attachment, like twenty feet of yeah. line. Of, it's it's like a filament, kind of like a uh, uh, kind of like a fishing pole, right? And you you attach it to your drill, and it's got a brush head on the front. And you run this thing down that down the dryer vent, and it will push out that stuff. Not just air, but the the lint gets wet and caked to the sides like a like a like concrete, like an artery eating potato chips. That's so, right. um, well, and and that's the very reason that violates code. Now we right. cannot do that. Now what what we do now? We run them up in the attic mm-hmm. and put a booster fan on them. Right. Then we run them out the side of the house. Well, it doesn't give it. It doesn't give it chance for the stuff to lay on the bottom of the pipe and yep. cake up. That's right. Because you're also remember when you're drying clothes, you're getting rid of the moisture. So that moisture has to go down that pipe also, sure. getting all that lint wet. So uh, yeah, if that's when I do it is when I hear a river running down. <laughs> yeah, woo! I tell you what, you can always if you ever want to solve that problem for good. Yeah, for good. Seal that off. Run up. Uh, up the wall through the attic, put a booster booster fan once you get in the attic, and you will have no problem anymore. Great idea. That's Thank the permanent you. fix to that. Thanks, Toby. I hope you have a great day. You too. Thank you. Right. Uh, number to call is 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464 if you want to uh, get in on this action. It's time for our last break of the hour. You uh, still have time to get your home improvement questions answered this morning. So you can call us with your questions, comments. Just tell us what project you're working on. 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or you can send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. If you missed any of today's program, you can always listen back by podcast using any podcast app or the MPB Public Media app. Join the conversation now this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Wanted to uh, get a question off to you here real quick, Jeff before we go to the phone with Lisa in Hattiesburg. Uh, All right, here's the email. What is the best way to go? I have a fireplace with a gas line. I removed the old gas logs because they did not fit properly. Too big for the small fireplace. Uh, I would like to replace the logs with new smaller ventless ones or an insert. Which is best and which do you recommend? New smaller logs or a new insert? I don't like inserts for one thing. What's that? Um, Why not? Why um, uh, without getting in a lot of detail, yes, we can we can build a masonry fireplace for almost the same amount of money. Okay. Now my buddy that sells inserts is mad at me right now. Right. Yeah. He, he knows my feelings. Right. So unless your insert is bad, uh-huh. don't change it. Leave right. it alone, and just change your logs. Right. So oh. this guy took the old logs out, and he wants to know whether he should replace with smaller logs or an insert. And you think smaller logs? Well, yeah, because he he's he's asking two different things. Okay, I got logs, and then I have an insert. Those are two separate. Right. I guess he's saying, should I just do smaller logs or go with an insert? Yeah, I I would I would use smaller logs. Okay. Um, versus going to the expense of doing the inserts. I don't like them anyway. Right. Well, and it's funny because uh, when you think about it, this can have, and, and obviously we don't, he did not put here, but, but you know, fireplaces have a lot of different uh, purposes in the South. Mm-hmm. An insert really is designed to warm, uh, give warmth to your home, but that's, that's not right. why all fireplaces are installed into homes. No. Sometimes they're just for pretty. So hey, I've installed many of them that never seen a fire. Right. <laughs> right. Never had a fire in them. Right. Right. So. All right. Uh, Lisa's on the line in uh, Hattiesburg. And I'm so tr- I'm so 
Oh, man, this, this bites. Fridge trouble. What's going on in your fridge, Lisa? Good morning. Good morning. The, refer- the refrigerator stopped performing very well, um, and both the refrigerator and freezer side were too warm. Uh, ice cream was melting in the freezer and such. Uh-huh. So we unplugged it for two days and let it completely thaw out. Mm-hmm. And now it's working just fine, but I know that this if, if there's a problem, it's going to repeat itself. Mm-hmm. So what could cause that, both on the refrigerator and the, the uh, freezer side? It's a side-by-side refrigerator. Okay. I have one of these side-by-sides. We had a similar problem, and I found that uh, it's funny because the, the, the refrigerator gets its cool from the freezer, right? And yeah. there's, there's, this, there's this portion in between those two things uh, that will get clogged up, meaning it'll ice over. And uh, that ice over is not normal. It's because some sort of moisture keeps hitting that right there. But, but uh, once that little area between the fridge and the freezer, the, the, the portion of the, fri- or the freezer that, pe- that feeds the fridge the cold air, that will freeze. And, and, and believe it or not, I have taken just a hairdryer to that one thing, and all of a sudden the, the, the fridge is back on line. I, I, you know, I, I agree with that, too. I, I think another thing I would check is my coils. Mm-hmm. Um, See if they're dirty. Yeah, depending on the age. Some of them are on the back. Some of them are on the bottom. This is uh, a side-by-side. What, how old is this fridge, Lisa? Probably about... 10 years old. Okay. Yeah, coils are probably on the bottom. You probably have a vent which which sucks air over those coils um, to to coil to cool the coils. Mm-hmm. You might check and see if those need to be cleaned, vacuumed out, and there's typically a water pan down there too. Okay. So. Would that would that inhibit the freezer from I Sure. The Absolutely. The one one thing on the freezer also uh, one of the biggest things I've seen on a couple that I've worked on is, I know this is going to sound silly, but not all of the, um, it's not sealing properly. That's right. Therefore, it's pulling in moisture and warm air from the outside. So uh, it's an, uh, since it's what's considered now, Lisa, an older fridge freezer, if it's F, if it's you know, ten years old or older, it's considered an older model. If the freezer had a lot of ice in it, then mm-hmm. it, then it is pulling yeah. that warm air right. around the seal. And once it freezes up like that, it might not close completely, which only just makes it yeah, worse right. and perpetuates. So, uh, make sure your all of your seals when when the fridge is working right and the freezer is working right, make sure all the seals are connecting perfectly. There's actually a little magnet inside those seals that make it connect. Yep. So, there you go. Can you replace those seals? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's not easy or fun, but it's possible. And you can order those online. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, uh, one of the callers, Sue, is in Beaumont. Hadn't heard from Sue in a moment. How to sharpen scissors. Are you with us, Sue? Yes, sir, I am. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. I, I know this is a stupid question, but uh, how, do you, how do you keep scissors sharp? Because I know this is stupid, so I wait the last to call, but... I have about 15 or 20 pairs of scissors around the house, but if you want to cut fabric, paper, or, or some hair, you, you, they, they don't stay sharp. I got you. I got, I, I got a great idea. Yeah. Uh, are these good scissors? I've bought good, good quality scissors and cheap ones, and okay. they're all the same. They just right. don't stay sharp. Well, the cheap ones, the best way to sharpen those is to throw them away and get new ones. <laughs> the, if you have an expensive one, I suggest you go out and get yourself a Dremel. Do you have a Dremel, Sue? I don't. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Dremel is a, is a, well, I won't say a Dremel, a rotary tool. It's a small handheld tool. Uh, that people use to do uh, grinding and cutting and and but you know what it gets just it gets way down into the into the small things you even find dremels at nail salons people use them all the time for all kinds of different things so um, that would be the thing I would suggest uh, and the rotary tool companies even sell a a attachment that will allow you um to yeah it'll allow you to grind an angle perfectly i use it every year for for my uh 
lawnmower. Oh, my gosh. The greatest hack of all time. Liz just walked up. She's answered the phones today and said, I cut sandpaper with my. It's a great idea. She cuts sandpaper with the scissors and, sharpens, and sharpens them. The scissors. So, oh, sandpaper. Okay, I'll try that. Well, now, I'm assuming it's going to be a very fine grade sandpaper. Oh, look at this. Okay, uh, uh, Liz pulled it up, and I'm going to read Google to you now on radio. <laughs> uh, cutting fine grit sandpaper will also sharpen your scissors. So there you go. There you go. Straight from the Internet, so it's got to be true. Hey. You know no, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Are the ones they they sell to kids to the, 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 the I mean the kids that first graders with the blunt tip ends yes they sharp longer than any other kind of scissors yeah yeah <laughs> well I think that's a great idea Liz thank you thank you all right Sue appreciate it all right uh, you know the uh, <laughs> one of the things I want you to uh, pay attention to Jeff is we're doing very well on our podcast. Very well. Nice. And we're we're over 180,000 downloads of what? our podcast. Yes, we are. Does that mean 180,000 people? Uh, that means people have uh, downloaded it 180,000 times. Wow. So if you want to download it, go to any of your favorite podcast app. Uh, that's the way to go. Uh, I think, uh, let's see, we use Pocket Cast or any, anything you want to use. Google, whatever, it's there. So check it out. Fix It 101 on uh on podcast got a question here that i want to get to before we go what is the best uh oh, we did that sorry um i have carpet laid over a concrete slab can i take the carpet up and stain and seal the slab floor i think it, it's a great look but i don't know if the concrete might sweat in our humidity can i do the treatment myself or does this require professional you can do all of this yourself you it is a look i will tell you ladies and gentlemen and i I've done this once before. Concrete is hard to fall on, folks. Yeah, it and it's, hurts. It's got tack strip on it. It's It's been painted. It's got... I don't like it. Okay. I, yeah. won't, I don't like There's it. There's your opinion. All right. All right, folks. Fix It 101 is production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio. and is funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you. Show was produced today by Java Chapman, as always. Our call screener was Liz Gill. For Pam Pibus and Jeff Sammons, I'm Jason Klein. Stay tuned for our Wednesday 10 a.m. program, Everyday Tech, Jay White. Join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101, only on MPB Think Radio.